Okay, several of you have brought it to my attention that I haven't put up any videos in a while. Well, today's the day where I change all of that. I've got a friend of mine who does a lot of work on organs and such. I think he's more into the solid state stuff, but he's asked to work on a lot of old tube type organs for churches. Apparently there's a lot of them still in use. And what you see in front of you are two amplifiers that came out of Leslie cabinets. And when he first saw these amplifiers at the church, uh, most of the tubes were busted from physical abuse. It makes you wonder what they're, what they're doing there. And after he uh, replaced the tubes, he found some parts burned under the chassis, so he asked me if I'd look at them for him. And I told him I would because his only other alternative is to send these amplifier chassis off and swap them out and I think he said that would cost several hundred dollars a piece and I'm sure I can fix these a lot cheaper than that unless something catastrophic is, is wrong with them. So let's have a look here. The one on the left is the newest one. It looks like something from the 90s maybe. And the one on the right is the oldest one, probably from the early to mid 60s if I had to guess. Now we'll look under the hood and see what we're up against. Here's the oldest one. And as you can tell, it's been partially recapped. Uh, see all those orange drop capacitors there? Those have been replaced and they'll, they're probably still okay. And I see that little gray capacitor, that's the cathode bypass cap for the output tube. It's probably still okay. But there's a bunch of those old plastic cased paper Tiny Chief branded capacitors that someone left in here, as well as a green, I believe that's a Cornell Dublier or however you pronounce it, brand capacitor. Those will all need to be replaced. And this resistor is smoked. It comes out of the voltage regulator tube and enters into the filter capacitor. So I suspect the reason that resistor is smoked is because the filter capacitor is likely defective. So what I want to do with this one first is to check the condition of the power transformer and to do that I'll remove the rectifier. This originally had I believe a 5U4 rectifier tube and someone replaced it with a solid state plug-in replacement. So I'll have to remove the rectifier and then I will apply 120 volts AC to the primary winding of the power transformer and make sure nothing smokes or burns. And if nothing smokes or burns, I will check the output voltages of the secondary windings. And if all that's good, then we will proceed with the other things that need to be done to this. I don't think it'll be too bad. It's basically just a just an audio amplifier, no different from any other tube type audio amp. And here are the here's the tube lineup, a couple of twelve AU sevens, uh two KT eighty eights and push pull. I believe this is a zero C three, which is the voltage regulator tube. And this used to be a 5U4 tube in this socket, but someone replaced it with a modern solid-state plug-in replacement. And here's the newer Leslie amplifier, probably from the 80s or 90s, I would say. It uses a couple of 12AU7s and then two uh, KT88 tubes and push-pull for the audio output stage. No rectifier tube in this model. This uses solid state diodes from the factory. Now we'll look at the underside of this. Okay, here's the underside of the chassis. This uses orange drop capacitors, which should be okay. And more modern electrolytic capacitors that are probably still good. Uh, this cathode bypass capacitor, I can tell it's gotten hot in the 
paper covering is starting to shrink so that will probably need to be replaced it appears that this fuse is blown and this resistor right there you can see it's smokeified so we will need to find out what's causing the short because resistors generally do not go up in smoke on their own they go up in smoke because something shorted and drew too much current through them and caused them to go poof and since we have burned resistors in both units it will be necessary to find out what caused those resistors to burn so I think just for fun we'll start with the oldest unit first and one nice thing about it even the electrolytic filter capacitor plugs in which is a nice touch of course I won't be able to get a capacitor like this anymore should this one be bad but I can rig up something to take its place okay and I will now remove the solid state rectifier diode and now we're ready to apply power to the power transformer and, and check its operation and I've now removed all of the tubes to minimize the risk of breaking any of them while I'm working on this I have my 120 volts connected to the primary winding we're plugged into the variable AC power supply going to start it out at zero volts and bring it up slowly and we'll pay attention to the amp meter make sure there's no excessive current draw and so far so good leave it about halfway for a minute okay at 80 volts AC input I'm measuring over 560 volts AC coming out of the transformer so that that's good so far and at 100 volts we're kicking out about 690 volts my meter only goes up to 700 volts AC so can't go much higher if I was to run it up to full 120 volts it would run past the rating of my meter but so far so good nothing smoking and or, or burning or, or smelling up the place so at least we know our high voltage winding is healthy now let's check our 5 volt rectifier filament winding that's good and now our 6.3 volt winding for the other tube filaments that's good okay our power transformer appears to be good and I've checked the continuity of the windings on the filter choke and on the audio output transformer and those all appear to be good so as far as I'm concerned this this amplifier is worth repairing well, I tested the filter capacitor on my more modern uh, capacitor meter this thing here but these really don't do a very good job of checking capacitors at rated voltage so I was going to use this piece of test equipment you've seen it before and one of the dreaded things happens it sometimes happens uh, working on another piece of equipment and then the piece of test equipment craps out yeah I turned it on and after a few seconds I heard a pop and saw a spark come out of the back of it so now I have to take a break and find out what's wrong with this thing that's why I really need to have multiple pieces of the same test equipment so when this happens I don't have to play troubleshooter on the on the uh, test equipment it's very frustrating well I don't know what happened but I took it apart I was going to troubleshoot the uh, capacitor tester and it started working again so uh, who knows what's wrong with it okay while the capacitor tester is behaving itself I have a modern 22 microfarad 450 volt capacitor connected to it and we adjust our dial for maximum eye opening there we go and we turn our power factor knob up for maximum eye opening and there's virtually no power factor so that's good 
Now we'll test for leakage. And we'll gradually bring the uh, working voltage up. As you increase the voltage to the capacitor, the eye will close and then it will open back up, which is normal. It may take a few seconds for the eye to open, but it will open back up on a good capacitor. At no time should the eye ever remain fully closed. Okay, so you get the idea how a new capacitor test. And here's the old capacitor out of the amplifier. This is actually four capacitors in one case. A 30 microfarad, 30 microfarad, 30 microfarad, and 10 microfarad, all at 475 working volts. Well, I don't have anything with those values, so I'm going to have to order those. Now we'll hook the capacitor tester to this one, and I'll show you how this one tests not good. We're now connected to one of the 30 microfarad settings. We have the bridge control set for maximum eye opening. Now we'll rotate the power factor knob up. Okay, this section is not that bad. There's virtually no uh, power factor, which is a good thing. Now we'll test for leakage. I'm not even up to just a little over 300 volts, and you can see the difference there. Now the eye is closed and is not opening, so that section of that capacitor is leaky. Okay, we're on the second 30 microfarad section, and looks like we have about 15% power factor there, which is a little high. Let's check this section for leakage. Okay, this this section is not as bad as the previous section. Okay, so let's check the third section of this capacitor. And the third section also has about 18% power factor, which is kind of high. And we'll test for leakage. And this section appears to be leaking much worse than any of the other sections. I'm up to about 350 volts. Now we're about 400, and you can see what's happening. So that section's leaking. And now the 10 microfarad section, this one's, that section's got about 20% power factor, which is a little on the high side. And now we'll test for leakage. Well, actually that section's not leaking too bad at all. But the other sections are definitely defective, so we'll just replace all four sections with individual capacitors. Okay, we'll call this part one of the Leslie repair video. Uh, when I get the uh, appropriate capacitors in, I will make another video and hopefully we'll have these things up and running pretty soon. But yep, this capacitor I believe is what was responsible for that resistor going up in smoke. So there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.